This segment is brought to you by Shutterstock. Anyway, I just created a huge file that does 0 through 999, and that's what's important to me. In fact, if I do, uh, if I do a more on that file, whoops, not M-O-R, more on brute5.txt, you'll see that, again, it does del begin with that delay, whoops, and then it starts doing its thing. So I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and put this on a duck. I've got a USB rubber ducky right here outside of its case, and I've got it plugged into, some people asked about this. This is simply an OTG adapter. Uh, we now couple the ducky with this, and this will get you going on, um, on any Android, and really any OTG adapter will do. I just like the little tiny dongly ones. It's not a female A to male micro adapter. It's, it's specifically an OTG. So what they do is they ground pin five on this side, and then that tells the Android phone that this is OTG. And I think we've gotten into that in a separate segment. But that said, let's pull out the SIM card, or the SIM card, the uh, micro SD card, put that little guy into our reader, and pop that in my machine. And it shows up here, so if I do a slash ls slash media, and this guy here, you can see I already have an inject up bin on there, so I'm going to remove that. And rather than use the online duck encoder, I'll just do it the old school way and do Java tack jar uh, duck encoder. This is duck encoder 1.2. You could also do the same thing with the new encoder 2.1, which does multiple languages, and you can find links to that at usbrubberducky.com. Uh, regardless, I'm just going to take that file that we just created, brute5.txt, and turn it into an inject.bin, which I can then put on the duck, and it'll start quacking it. So, tack i for my input file brute5.txt, tack o, uh, you know, I'll just leave it here. If I don't specify anything else, it will make an inject.bin right here. In fact, let me make sure that is the latest and do it again. I should have overwritten it, but we'll see. And so now I'll uh, move that inject.bin to my SD card. I'm going to run sync, which will make sure that my file system is all synced up and happy. And then eject. Or I could just click that at the uh, bottom there. And hooray, now I should be able to unplug this guy. Let's test it out. So, all right, so with our phone turned on, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the duck. And it's going to wait about five seconds before it starts doing its magic. We put that delay in there. And that's just to make sure that it doesn't like immediately start flooding the computer with stuff. And there we go. We can see the last digit when it gets to the end, because we are typing pretty quickly. And we went through 0000, through 0003, we'll get to 0004, and we've now done five attempts. It's going to hit enter twice, remember? And we're going to speed this up right now so we don't have to wait the full 30 seconds. And 0005, 0006, 0007, 0008. And hey, would you look at that? And there we go. Now, obviously, I used the pin 0008 for demonstration purposes, so it wouldn't take so long. And so to give you a little bit of a, uh, an idea here, with that 30-second timeout, theoretically, that gives us doing 10,000 keys, that's 0000 through 9999, about six seconds per key. Now, that would take 60,000 seconds. So 60,000 seconds divided by 60, that's 1,000 minutes, which, again, divided by 60 would give us 16 and a half hours. That's actually not that bad. I mean, if you like found a phone at the bar. Now, the thing about that is you could easily take the SIM card out of the phone. Now, remote wipe isn't going to save you, which is kind of crazy. So uh, just to demonstrate that, I actually have a phone set up over here. And this is my Nexus. And so what I thought was, OK, after a little while, though, and this is a Nexus set up completely uh, stock. The only thing I've changed is put the passcode 1234 on it. And there it goes. It says, you have incorrectly typed your PIN 760 times. <laughs> All right. I've typed my passcode in now 760 times, and nothing has happened. And this is stock. I really assumed as well that Android security was going to, after 50 attempts or 100 attempts or something like that, format the device. Because if this falls into enemy hands, suddenly they've got all the photos of my kitten on there. Bummer, right? Well, OK. That's assuming I'm using a four-digit passcode. And yes, this is a huge security blunder. Now, there's also ways to mitigate this. For example, you could use encryption 
on the uh, the device. And when you use an encryption on the device, uh, when you boot up, it asks you for, well, I guess it is the same pin. But I'm assuming that has some different lockouts. I'm going to have to test this out because I only started uh, messing with this, but I thought it would be fun to do a uh, segment here kind of demonstrating some of the caveats of online brute force attacks and some of the fun capabilities of the USB rubber ducky. The other thing to keep in mind is that, that this is all assuming a four-digit pin. So if a four-digit pin can be brute forced in 16 and a half hours, well, then what would a five-digit pin take? Well, that would take, uh, instead of 2.05 hours we're talking about, well, that's, it's exponential. It would, it would take uh, 166 hours. And then uh, a 10-digit pin would take nearly 2,000 years. Of course, all of this is moot when you're using a weak key and somebody can, say, put your phone into a, uh, a mode where they can pull the ROM and actually do some cool forensics analysis on this. And for that, there's an awesome tool called Santoku Linux. And so we're going to be playing with that a little bit later. But basically, really cool live distro that allows you to do some fun forensics work on Android, um, including potentially pulling the key out if it's weak enough, which is awesome. Uh, so what else have we learned here? Basically, online brute force, uh, slow. Uh, using the USB rubber ducky, there's also keep in mind that it's, it's kind of stupid. If I were to leave it running on this one, it would get to 0008, and then it would keep typing 0009, but we're in my home screen now, and on a long enough timeline, if you're jamming at the keyboard on an Android device, you're going to get Angry Birds. It's just a fact of life. Uh, so what could you do? I guess you could set up a camera or maybe you get bored. Uh, the nice thing about the USB rubber ducky is, you know, it, it never gets bored, um, it never gets tired, it never has to pee. But in this case, you would actually need a human to sit here and say, oh, we've tried 775 times. So I've tried 0775, one of those? Anyway, close enough. You could set up a camera with some time code to kind of figure out where it, it cracked in, uh, but it's not a two-way device, so it doesn't know, kind of. Now, there's a potential there to actually know. What's fun is Android actually gives away its state uh, in kind of a fun security feature way where it doesn't uh, allow MTP. MTP is Media Transfer Protocol, and it's the way that photos are uh, transferred from one device to another, say, you know, phone to phone or phone to like a printer or things of that nature. And um, it doesn't, it's on by default, but it doesn't allow you to MTP a phone if the lock screen is on. So you would need some, now I'm not saying the duck can do this, okay? But what I'm saying is, if you had the ability to query every other key, every other um, uh, uh, key attempt, whether MTP is enabled or not, you would be able to tell uh, pretty much if you've gotten in or not, which is kind of useful. So there's that to keep in mind. Um, I'm gonna say if it's a four digit pin code and you're the mafia, then maybe you've got 16 hours to kill just getting in the phone, I'm just saying. Uh, so. Hopefully all of this just gets fixed in the latest update because this is kind of like a no-brainer thing that should be enabled by default. Your you know, advice to the consumer is you know, use a long enough pin code that, it, like I said, 10 digits is going to take 2,000 years. Um, or at that point, they're just going to pull your ROM and do forensics analysis anyway. So use the encryption. In fact, I'd go into Android's security setting and just check every box you see. I've even seen cool boxes like, if the SIM card changes, go ahead and format the device. Uh, so. You know, that's kind of fun. And I thought this was an excellent example of using Brace Expansion with Ducky Script, with a stock phone, and a little bit of online brute force. I wonder what your take is on this. Be sure to hit us up, feedback at hack5.org. Let me know what you guys think of my ramblings when it comes to the Android and the Duckies and things of that nature. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, it's all about Linux distros to break into stuff. Stay tuned. Shutterstock.com is the place to go when looking for stock photos, vectors, illustrations, and video clips. You can sign up for large image packages, monthly subscriptions, or just grab a single image for like a blog post or a mock-up. They even offer enhanced licensing access in case you want to print out an image or get it screened on a t-shirt. Well, Shutterstock.com is easy to curate your own galleries. They make searching easier and you can download any image of any size all for one price. No nickel and diming for the high res stuff. So head to Shutterstock.com or install their iPad app to get started. No credit card needed. And when you find the images you want, use the offer code HAK12 to get 30% off any package. 